resigning? I get to ask the important one in the family, how did this come about for you? How did that happen? Uh, how Zach came and for him. And, you know, it's all of a sudden, uh, the very handsome guy uh, landed to my studio. Uh, his name was Patrick Burns because he saw the, our group exhibition at Japan Society. And uh, uh, that's, uh, and then <coughs> he, uh, he brought uh, Zach. And then it started. It was, but the beginning was only the uh, three hours and, uh, you know, two young ladies coming from some outer space from Texas. And uh, I thought it was over, but uh, then they came back af after they made an uh, eight-minute uh, uh, pilot. Then started, and I thought it's going to over in a few weeks, but continued five years. Well, you know what's interesting is that you have an interesting history when you come over compared to what he's doing, and I like that whole aspect of things, and I think that's very, very important. What made you so interested in the story and why? Because it is an interesting story to tell. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when I first met the Shinoharas, Patrick and I were focused a little bit more on Ushio's art. You know, he was the sort of more famous of the two, and you know, he was very, very excited to, to show his artwork and to show his personality to our camera. Um, but then when we saw Noriko's work and, um, you know, there was this, there was just so much to her cutie art and to the story and so it sort of revealed this whole other side that we hadn't really realized and it was really this, um, this tension and the drama that sort of came out of, of uh, her work that kind of, you know, enticed me to sort of follow that side of the story and to really understand this relationship and to understand, you know, what where the sort of truth lied in, in, in the cutie and bully comic book and how much of it was exaggerated and how much of it was was real. And so the questioning sort of shifted and, and it became more about the relationship and, and more about Noriko's struggle um, and, and, you know, the sort of role reversal that's kind of started to happen and, and uh, the, the shows that occurred that brought things out of them that I otherwise didn't really know. When you think about when you first came to New York, what was that like for you? New York was in New York and New York was in New York and New York was in New York and Forty years ago, when I landed in uh, New York, it was a lot different from what New York is, how New York is right now. And back then, I feel like New York was a lot closer to my art. But then uh, that's, uh, that was a superficial image of me in New York, of New York back then, and back then I didn't have anybody I knew in New York. And I had to start from one uh, because in Japan, I had all these friends who were my curator, like museum curators and uh, art critics, but then in New York, I had no friends, so I really felt like I just started my life again here. There. When you think about the, the 70s and the 80s, how tough was that for you, for your art? もう、もう、あの、I feel like 
back then, I mean, the 70s and the 80s, it was really a struggle for me um, because in, when I just landed, I had the grant from Rockefeller, so I was okay, but then after the money ran out, uh, I had some visa situation uh, that needed to be solved, and living situation, and loft, and art. Uh, they all had to be um, funded somehow, and so there was a lot of pressure, but then in the meantime for my art, I feel like it, w it really refreshed me and also energized me. Yeah. See, I love the cutie because she's hiding behind the microphone right now, which is good. One of the things I liked about your story was it's almost like you laid dormant for a while. You never gave up your dream but it was always there. And now you're that bright shining star. But you also knew how to assist and how to make sure your husband was okay. That's tough in today's world. Imagine way, way back then. So my hat goes off to you on that because I can only imagine what kind of job that was. Uh, it was a uh, um, never sleep job. <laughs> because, you know, uh, not only the uh, raising a child and uh, keeping the house and uh, still wife has a job, uh, but uh, my case was uh, I have like uh, two kids, not only my son, but uh, he never grown up five years old. So I have to always keep, the, keep my eye on him and uh, we always have a uh, uh, financial struggle. Because we both never earn um, enough. Mostly, I, I never earn nearly zero. I earned nearly zero, and uh, he earns very little. And uh, it was a mystery how we survived the, uh, the, uh, until now. Always like the, I always felt it was a miracle. And the miracle is my uh, kind of God. Always some assistance coming when we are diff desperately hurt. And, uh, uh, and making my art. If I don't make art, I never stay with this difficult man. It was the way I stay with him, the art is, because we are united by art. Uh, if we, I'm a, I wanna have a decent life, I should have uh, spread it long time ago. But uh, because of art, I gave up the decent life. That's uh, so, um, it was uh, uh, 24 hours I sacrificed to my art, uh, to the art. You know, I've, I've never been married, so it's fun to see how life was going on with that. That's one of the reasons, because I'm an artist too, uh, one of the things is I never wanted to get married because I wanted to devote my life to my art, which was doing interviews and things like that and helping my friends. So my hat goes off to you, and, and especially back, because this was an excellent movie. I call it the four E's. A movie's gotta be exciting, entertaining, you know, emotional, empathetic, and this has all of those to it. That's my own rating system. I call it the four E's, and that's what this has. Thank you. So when it came to this, what was most important for you, for the audience, to get that audience reaction? What was most important that you needed to portray for, for the getting the story on them? What was the most important aspect of the film uh, in completing it? or Well, once or, it was completed, what yeah. was the most important that you wanted to get that audience reaction? What was most important? Oh, for me, yeah. personally? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, it started out as a, as, a, as a kind of nights and weekends project. It was always sort of a side project. I felt like it was a small film, it was a niche film, and, and the the hope and you know the sort of the dream was that it would cross over and and be this film that everyone could sort of relate to and I think um, gradually you know because the film became more and more about their relationship and more about you know uh, theme related as, a, as opposed to sort of like so specific and plot related the themes of marriage of aging of, of relationships of sacrifices that people make for work any any work that they do, the sacrifices you make for love. Um, you know, people could relate to the story and see their own lives in Ushio and Norikos and consider their own, um, you know, relationships. And I think, uh, you know, it was important that it got talked about in that way, that it wasn't talked about in a way that was specifically an artist documentary or, 
or um, you know talked about in reference necessarily you know, to, to other films, but sort of as you know its own thing and its own emotional ride and journey. And you know that was kind of uh, the goal, I think, to 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 really you know to really suck an audience in and to hold their and to captivate them for this you know entirety, whether they were you know interested in art specifically or not I think you know and and um, so sort of that that crossover aspect I think was was pretty important for us so were you surprised that when it went to Sundance you got the reaction that you were expecting absolutely absolutely I mean I certainly wasn't expecting it I mean I think Sundance really championed the film which was great and I think you know they sort of put us on the map and made people you know because it's a film that was always kind of tough to sell on paper um, you really had to see them and, and see the material to sort of like, you know, get get captivated in the same way that I was and to kind of fall in love with their story. And I think, you know, so 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 it became kind of this word of mouth, kind of a gem of a f- film. And, and um, you know, that was really, that was really great. I mean, it's kind of the only way that a movie like this can kind of, you know, catch on and be seen by more people than, than necessarily only the, the niche audience that, you know, would know about it. So when this strange white guy comes to your door saying, we want to make a film on you guys, what was your reaction on that? Uh, because um, uh, we, we are used to the interviewers and uh, filmmakers and TV <laughs> crews, so I thought it's the same thing. And uh, the, uh, the uh, for, before that comes, Patrick, <coughs> he was a quite a nice guy, and uh, even he has uh, experience staying in Japan one year and taught at high school. So, and uh, his approach was uh, through our art. So, uh, it was okay, okay, they, they can film us. For us, being filmed is kind of part of the, our life too, already before. Film <laughs> was... 大事なんで、あの別にあのザクのそのなんていうかなアウトサイドは別に気にしなかった。でも一番友達になれたのはやっぱりあのフィーリングがね、あの日本人のフィーリングとちょっと似てるところがたくさんあった。yeah, actually, um, I really feel that uh, it's the film that's important. So I didn't really you know, feel it was important to judge him because of his looks. But then uh, I really felt the connection with him because I think we had something in common. He, his uh, um, approach was a lot like uh, Japanese. That's how I felt. So after it goes to Sundance, all of a sudden you get this reaction. What happens to both of your careers at that point? After Sundance, <laughs> after Sundance uh, our situation and our career it wasn't changed. Uh, but um, at the same time at the Sundance, uh, we showed some of works. And, uh, because uh, the, some uh, <coughs> non-profit organizations out of space uh, was already our friend before the, before the Sundance. And uh, so he rushed to have the exhibition, not a year later, but in January. And uh, uh, we got a good reaction after that. <coughs> <coughs> eh, to, Mizuri, eh, to, eh, to, eh, to, Columbia? Eh, to, 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 まるであのヤンキーススタジオの街の本番の時のようなオサギでものすごくあのフィルムのオーディエンスがあのオネストであのダイレクトでもうなんていうかなブライトでこういうことはねあの僕の専門のミュージアムとかギャラリーには絶対
people were just screaming and uh, it was just amazingly honest and direct and just really happy um, reaction. reaction and I really felt like how I felt when I witnessed the uh, uh, Yankee, when Matsui was with Yankee Stadium. and he, at the Yankee Stadium I was there oh, yeah. and I, he hit a home run. And the, how the uh, audience, the people that were watching the game, really re so reacted. Then, it was just so like that. So that, the Ruble Mia, Ruble, or Metropolitan, ah, no, Moman, yeah, definitely, not seen that event. So, I, 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 what do you hope the audience gets out of seeing this movie? What do you hope the reaction is? You can start. Maybe I can answer. <laughs> um, I already heard uh, many people cried at the screenings. <laughs> and I uh, was so happy to hear that, because uh, they have their own uh, problems, everybody. Yeah, so uh, it's related, so our film is related to, to everybody. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. The book, uh, the book was, uh, the audience, 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 the the audience, the audience, the audience, the audience, the the であの大きなお金で動かされているスーパースターたちの出来事は全くあの嘘であると空いばりであるということは理解してほしい。So this film really portrays、um, the true artist's life, and it's different from you know how you see the, super,、uh, the, the, the celebrities' lives on the newspaper or、uh, anything public. いや、スーパースターのアーティストだよ。セレブリティのアーティストたちの。セレブリティアーティスト。アーティストたちのあの出来事、うん、いろんなあのなんていうかな、高く売れたとか、高く売れたとかね、そういうものとはもう本当の話とは一切関係ないということですね。それで理解してほしい。So、the life of us that's portrayed in the movie does not show anything fake. Like、uh, uh, what I mean by fake is that. How much the art was sold, or something super superficial. 特にこの映画はあのアメリカの美術学校でやってほしい。I really would like this movie to be shown at the art universities and colleges. That would be good. Same question. Yes. Um, I, I mean. I hope that the you know that the audience sort of can you know I, I don't know I view this their life as a very unconventional lifestyle in many ways and I, but I think it's like it can be very inspirational for people I think it's people sort of like determine their path in life and sort of viewing this this lifestyle and the sort of like you know pure art art at, at all cost mentality is is、uh, it it rubs off on people I think and and.、Um, Sort of gives them a, a a way to sort of imagine, you know, a, a different way of living. But I think it also, you know, is related to relationships and 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 shows people just how intensely complicated relationships are, and that that, that they're really beyond analyzing and and beyond、um, determining exactly why or why it doesn't work. And I think it's important to sort of.、Um, View relationships in in that way, and not not so clear cut. And and、uh, I think we learn a lot about、um, ourselves, you know, through that. So, thank you too. Or I should say.